Welcome back to Statistics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video I'm going to show you how to perform multiple regression in Excel, and it is very easy, much easier than you would expect. All right, so three things I'm going to preface here. One, um, I use the Mac version of Excel, so the Windows version is going to differ ever so slightly, but it is basically, for all intents and purposes, the same. Two, if you have not yet downloaded the data analysis tool pack, go ahead and do so or go see the video, which I have linked in the description where I show you how to download the data analysis tool pack. And then three is the actual data I have here itself. So I've got a Y variable here. This is my dependent variable. When I do multiple regression, I'm only allowed to have one dependent variable. However, the independent variables, which are my X's, X1 and X2 here, I can have as many of those as I want. So I can have one dependent, but I could have 50 independent variables, 50 X variables, okay? I can have as many of these as I want. I only have two here just to illustrate the point, okay? So let's actually do the multiple regression. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go to data, and then I'm going to go to data analysis. And what I'm gonna do is go to regression. So this regression will cover both uh, simple regression and multiple regression any regression that you have that's linear. If you do anything that's uh, non-linear, you have to do some transformations of this, and that's a different video. So what I'm gonna do is input the Y range. All you do is just the one Y variable, the one dependent variable, okay? The X range, okay, for this, let's suppose I had X variables that went out to column J. What I would literally do is put all of them in this X list, okay? Now I only have two X's, so I'm just gonna do these obviously, but if you had 50 X variables, you would just drag this thing way out there. You put all the X variables in like this. That's all there is to it. Um, if you wanna change the confidence level, you can. If not, by default, it's 95, but if you wanted to change it to say, maybe you're being really stringent, 99%, you would just do that. We're gonna keep it at 95, okay? Then I'm gonna select my output range. Let's do that. Um, let me put the output range down here. And then that's pretty much all you need to do for basic stuff. You can play around with these at the bottom. They're really not super important unless you have a reason to do them. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And here's my information. All right, let's go through probably the important things here. This R squared is a multiple R squared, even though it doesn't say that. So it is your multiple coefficient of determination, okay? We see it's 0.91 approximately, okay? Um, you would report this. Some people might also like this adjusted R squared. It's an adjusted multiple R squared, okay? I can even make this wider so you can see more there. Um, the difference between these, the R squared, the simple one, this multiple R squared, that one is an R squared based solely on the data that you gave in this table. So how many rows of data? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there are basically 12 data points. So 12 Y's and 12 X1's and 12 X2s, so 12 overall. Given only those 12 data points, this is the R squared that came directly out of that data, okay? What then is the adjusted R squared? The adjusted multiple R squared is, it's slightly more conservative, as you can see, it's a lower R squared, but it takes into account if I had more data points. So notice, for example, I don't have data points in rows 14, 15, and 16 here. But I could always add more data points. I don't have them yet, but I could, I could take more measurements, do more experimentation, get more data points. This adjusted R squared takes that into account that I could get more data points. And it's a little bit more conservative because I don't know what those data points are. So how well would this model fit new data that I do not have currently? Okay. And some people might like to report both of these. Okay. Now, the significance of this relationship is determined by this p-value. It does not say p-value. When you run this multiple regression in Excel, it will actually say significance f. This is your p-value though. So let me actually make a note of that. That is your p-value. So you can see it's 1.994. This e is times 10 to the negative fifth. 
So about 2 times 10 to the negative fifth, that is well below 0 0.05. So this is, so whatever relationship came out of this, it is significant overall. Okay? So that's important. Um, the F statistic right here um, can be important if you're determining um, if there's difference between the two um, X values. So is there a difference between X1 and X2? And there clearly is, which is why the F value is so high, but generally you would not need to report this value. Okay, the P value though, the significance F is very important. Now, suppose I wanted to construct a relationship out of these. How would I do this? Well, there are several ways you can do it. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna merge some cells together. So let me actually go to home, merge these cells. I'm actually gonna write the relationship between all of these variables, all right? Because ultimately what I'd like to do is construct an equation. It's always gonna be y equals, and how do I determine what everything is? Well, here I have the coefficient of the first x variable. I see that it's 0.118, we'll say. I also know the coefficient of the second x variable, x2 is 0 0.049. And then I also have the y-intercept. So literally, when I go and type this in, it's just gonna be 0 0.118 x1, all right, let me do capital x1, plus, and then I'm gonna take the second coefficient, 0, 0.0, let's say 49, times x2, and then I would just add on my y-intercept, which it happens to be negative, so it's going to be plus a negative, or just minus 5.2, let's say 49, okay? So that is my relationship. That is the model of this data. Now, how did I know to include both x1 and x2? Because sometimes in multiple regression, particularly if you have a lot of variables, some of them don't survive and you won't include them. How do I know to include both x1 and x2? Well, what I do is I go look at the p-value for each of the corresponding x variables. If that p-value is less than 0.05, then that variable is significant to the relationship and the model. So in this case, both variables x1 and x2 um, they are both below 0.05, therefore they are both significant contributors to this model. So I include them both. If, for example, I had a third variable and its p-value is like 0.6, I would not include that one, even though I put an x3 into the regression. I would not put x variable 3 into the model because 0.6 is much greater than 0.05. Therefore, this variable, hypothetically, is not significant in contributing to the model. Okay, all right, and then the only other thing that's really important to understand is actually what it means. So given this data, all right, and let's actually just look at the regular multiple R squared, although you can make the same argument with the adjusted R squared. My multiple R squared is 0.91 basically, all right, because we'll just round this to 0 0.91. What that means, and this is a hypothetical data set. Normally they don't come out this nicely. But this means that 0.91, 91% of all of this y variable, any time I take this y variable, 91% of the time, it is explained solely by these two x variables, which is very powerful. That means 91% of the time, if I want to predict this y variable, whatever it happens to be, all I need are two x variables. 9% of the time, because 100% minus 91% is 9, 9% of the time there's another variable that's a, a, a predictor. Okay, There might be some other x3 or x4 that I didn't measure that helps predict it 9% of the time. But 91% of the time, these two x variables predict the y variable. Okay, and so just in general, like linear regression, like simple linear regression, that is, higher R squared means a better relationship. So you always, you generally want a higher R squared value. But this one, just keep in mind, is a multiple R squared because we're doing multiple regression. And basically, that's all there is to it. Just understanding the important points here, you construct your model, and that's pretty much it.
Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe.